My name is Stevie Richards and I'm the owner and founder of Stevie Richards Fitness. I started Stevie Richards Fitness with one simple mission statement, to help others. I know what it's like to be injured. I know what it's like to be hurt. I know what it's like to be in pain each and every day of your life. I also know how to modify to overcome that pain, to overcome that discomfort, to overcome your injuries. And that's why I created the programs I did at Stevie Richards Fitness. Every single exercise has a modification. Everything can be successfully completed, no matter your age or fitness level. And that's what I infused in the 12 and 16 week resistance band training programs to pass along to you at an affordable, accessible price. Believe in yourself because I believe in you and I'm here to help you every step of the way. This is the Voices of Misery podcast. This show isn't for the easily offended, so PC Police on Patrol stand by. You've been warned. Now, let's join the nerd and nerdette with another podcast for that ass. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's the Voices of Misery podcast. I am the nerd, a.k.a. the Voice of Misery. My other half isn't going to be in on this one because I am interviewing an adult film star. But I do have a special treat for you guys. I do have someone else, and I'm sure you're going to be happy with who they are. He has he is actually having difficulty right now, some technical difficulty. His computer's uh, crashing, but I think he's making this up. I think he's really nervous because my guest today, our guest today, is his favorite adult film star and one of my favorites as well, Heather Hunter. And she is a legend, a true trailblazer in the industry. She is, you know, basically like back in the 90s when you would buy like a VHS tape or whatever, you know, we used to go to that shady section of the Palmer video or the Blockbuster in that little back area, you pick up an adult film. Heather Hunter was always, always a part of that. Like she was always in these things. So I'm sure like, you know, you may not know the name right off the top of your head, but if you look at her, you'd be like, oh my God, I, I used to, you know, crank one out to her. <laughs> big Ray, he cranked out quite a few to her, and he's a big fan, and uh, basically he's a good friend of the show, and uh, when I found out he was a big fan of Heather Hunter, um, I kind of wanted to reach out to her and get Big Ray on the show. It's a shame his computer's having some issues right now, but he will be joining the show. Um, we got Skype set up here, about to call Heather in a minute. I just wanted to do a little introduction. Um, she's an ABN Hall of Fame winner back in 2003. Uh, even more importantly, she was the first African-American vivid contract girl. Now, Vivid Video was known, was known for, like, Jenna Jameson and um, all these, like, white, beautiful women in porn. And you never notice, like, any black woman or really any woman of color. You would get a couple of, like, Hispanic women, but they were always, like, the lighter, white features, that kind of thing. And Heather Hunter was the one that just fucking kicked the door down. And there she was, man. She was all in it. And I'm very grateful for her for giving us the time of day to speak with us. She's very busy. And we don't have a long time with her. Um, we're only allotted a half hour, so let's just get to it, man. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Heather Hunter. Here we go, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. We are here with Heather Hunter. I am so excited to have you here, Heather. And I think there he is. Ray is on the show. Ray, you want to say hi to Heather Hunter? Well, first, I got to let you know, uh, nerd. I'm, I'm, I don't want to be unprofessional here. <laughs> <laughs> but the fact that the fact of the matter is that what I had to do is I had to actually do this for my cell phone. My 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 laptop is not working. I am stressed out because, ladies and gentlemen, I am on here with possibly the the, the young lady that got me into uh, you know loving beautiful, uh, dark skin, full lipped, amazingly uh, gorgeous women, Mr. Heather Hunter. I I can't believe I'm actually here. On oh with you. God, that is so sweet. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> Blessings to you. I wish you I wish you were here, here. <laughs> oh, you, you should look at a smile on his face. <laughs> yeah, give me a big hug, definitely. I'm oh my good. god. You better stop. Um, um but anyway, I did did, did uh Nur, did you tell Heather uh how I got to uh actually know I I'm jump just jumping in here, man. No, we actually just started, and I know you would move heaven and earth to be on this call right now with your with your boyhood crush. So go ahead, man. <laughs> go ahead and let her know, man. The floor is yours, my friend. 
let me express. Heather? Yes. You know, when I was uh, a young man, uh -huh. my, my father, he, uh, he bought cable for our home. And the, the primary reason for this was because I was a big wrestling fan. I used to love wrestling when I was a kid. Oh, I love And wrestling. you do? Yes. Oh, very cool. So I'm going to make this short and sweet, just like you. But anyway, so, <laughs> so basically, okay, and, and again, I have to apologize, guys, if my sound quality is really low. I'm doing this from a cell phone, which is, I have all this, this cool microphone here. It's, it's very embarrassing, but neither here nor there. So, Heather, do you remember back in the day, the old Manhattan cable uh, boxes they used to have uh, on top of the TVs? Yes. Okay, so I used the to... The ones that everybody used to try to just bootleg and just steal <laughs> them for free. <laughs> yeah, those. Well, well, we all did. By the way, you're, you're a Bronx girl, right? Because I'm from the Lower East Side. Yeah, I was born in the Bronx, raised in Brooklyn and Harlem. Yeah. Very cool. So you're from the hood, like me. Oh, yeah, definitely from the hood. Yeah, that's what's up. Okay. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I apologize. My, my hood came out there a little bit. But listen, I just wanted to let you know, so... I'm watching. Cha I'm on channel 11, and there's like a little lever on the side of the box, and you will pull it down. There was a channel J. Do you remember channel J? Yes, I used to be on the Manhattan. I used to have a couple of shows. I did my own public side access show called Wild Style, and then I used to be on the Robin Bird show. So, are you talking about that? Well, uh, number one, uh, yeah, I remember the very first time uh, I, I found channel J, mm -hmm. and there was the Robin Bird show, which I love Robin Bird. She's awesome. Oh, she's incredible. Uh, and I want to talk to you about that, and I'm going to shut up after this. But the very first person that I saw on that show was you, Heather Hunter. And and because of you, Heather, unfortunately for all these women out there that, put, that apparently want to be with me, I don't know why, because I'm terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I have a very specific type, and by the way, if you see my computer, I don't know if you guys can see me, but my computer is is uh, is uh, working out here, so I might jump on and a better quality mic. But Heather, you are the reason why I love my women. Uh, you know, a little dark, with a splash of milk, if you know what I mean. Long, <laughs> long curly hair, full lips. I am Latino, by the way, from the Lower East Side. And um, Heather, can you tell us a little bit about your time? On uh, you know, on, on public access, I guess you would say TV, the Robin Bird Show. I have a question about the Robin Bird Show, but um, please, you know, I mean, I well, Robin Bird, it was great because uh, at this time I was I was signed to uh, this company called Vidway, and it's a, you know it was a adult company, my first adult company. I was contracted to them, and every time I would feature at Show World. You know, a lot of the dancers, all the features, a lot of the adult stars would would go over to Robin Bird Show to do the Robin Bird Show. So she invited me, and that's how we became best friends, and we're best friends to this day. That was an incredible show. I mean, even Robin Bird actually was in my, my wedding. I was married years ago. Uh, she was one of my bridesmaids. So <laughs> that's how close we are. <laughs> Um, but that was an incredible experience because she taught me so much. She, she even taught me the gift on how to, how to, to entice people to take their clothes off for free. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's amazing. Um, and then just from her, you know, mentorship and doing the show and kind of being her, like Egg McMahon, her co-host, um, I wind up doing my own show uh, called Wild Style. I kind of flipped it up into a hip-hop music video erotic dances with celebrities they would all come into my house and interview it was actually really cool so but i want to get back actually when you were talking about wrestling because i love wrestling um i actually was on the bobby heating show um what? when bobby what? heating had a show um, oh my god I mean, hold on let me stop you is it the, the, it was like a johnny carson type gimmick he used to do right yes and mm -hmm. um he interviewed me on that show it was incredible I actually danced for him and everything on, on the show. Um, it was it was amazing. You can actually Google the piece. Um, but may he rest in peace. He was an incredible man. He really was. He was so full of life. He was just, every time I, I saw him, you know, it was like, he was always making me smile. Are you still always. a wrestling fan? Huh? 
Are you still a wrestling fan? And like, do you still I mean, watch the show? Kind of, I watch it here and there now, you know. But that's like, you know, you're like an older. You, you know, there's a lot of things you used to watch. You don't watch as much. But you know, the the whole thing about wrestling. I just love wrestlers. You know, I think. You know, I know a few as well. So I just respect. I respect the game they're in. Hey Heather, I'm I'm gonna jump off this call for literally one minute. I'm gonna jump on my computer, and I'll be right back. Please don't go anywhere. Okay. <laughs> All right, uh, nerd, nerd. Can you do me a favor? I'm, you know what? I I have my eyes on her. I like a hawk, my friend. She ain't going nowhere. I'm just asking you to do me this favor because you know I've been waiting. How old? I'm not gonna say how old I. Am. But by the way, I've been waiting a very long time to to speak to this young lady. So I have a ton to ask, and we have very short time with her. So can you do me that favor, please, sir? You got it, man. Hurry up. All right, thank you. I'll be right back. <laughs> All right, Heather. So who were some of your favorite wrestlers growing up? Um, I can say, of course, you know, Hulk Hogan. I really love The Rock. I love The Rock from then to now with his career. Um, and Bobby Heenan. Um, wow, who else was around? Um, what's the guy? I forgot his name. <laughs> Slick something, I, you know? Slick. You're talking about the manager, Slick, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you know? oh, yeah. Oh, um, yeah, I really, you know, I you know, I used to date someone who was really a big wrestling fan, and they got me into wrestling. <laughs> so, you know, back in the day, I was definitely a WWF watcher. So you were on the Bobby Heenan show. Now, do you think there was an opportunity there? And, like, if there was, is that something you, you, you would have taken? Is that, a, like, a path you would have gone down? Oh, no. No, not even. You know, I think anything that I, you know... The shows that I go on to, that I have desire to go on to, it's just because I, I pay homage to what I love, what they do, you know, their talent. But when it came to just Bobby Heenan, you know, like I said, he was an incredible spirit. It was like, how do you say no? Of course you want to be interviewed by Bobby Heenan. <laughs> yeah, that's one guy you never heard a bad thing about. I've never heard one bad word said about Bobby Heenan. Everybody that does an interview about him or talks about him has always said he's been like a great guy. You know, he's the guy you want to have around, basically. But, uh, yes. big, but big, oh, well, uh, big Ray did say the first time he saw you. Now, I want to tell you the first time I saw you, okay? Now, you know how they have these, uh, like, sections when you go to, like, a video store, like a blockbuster. They got that back section that you're not allowed to go to when you're a little kid, right? Well. Uh -huh. We were standing outside of a Blockbuster, and we had this guy who just, like, walked up. We're like, hey, sir, I'll give you five bucks if you get me a random porn video, right? We thought we were cool. He's like, all right, cool. You know, we give him five bucks. He goes in there. He comes out with just some random video and hands it to us. So we're like, all right, cool. So we went to his house. We put the table on. You know, it was just two dudes watching porn at 13. And it was like, what's wrong with that? And so we're sitting there, and then we see you come on the screen. I'm like, wow, who's this beautiful little lady? Because you were so tiny. And I'm like, I'm like, wow, I wonder who she's going to be paired with, right? And now comes right. now comes Lexington Steel, <laughs> and I'm like, this guy's so big and she's so little, and then he drops his pants, and I'm like, oh my god, he's gonna skewer her, he's gonna kill her. <laughs> I thought the first time I said it was gonna be the last time, but ever since that scene, I was just a I was just a big fan of yours, and I thank you for doing what you did. I mean, you had a hell of a career, and you know, it's just it's just insane. You know, yeah, like, I think back then, even with the uh, if, even doing the adult scenes, whenever I had to perform, I. <clears throat> wasn't even being, being so tight. Um, I am a little tough machine. My body's like a... a um, but it becomes such an out-of-body experience that, you know, it's it's you, you tend to just so escape into the, the great feeling of it. <laughs> oh, of course. I th hey, hi, hey, I think Romeo's back. Hey there, Big Ray. Are you back, buddy? All right, so, so, so here's the deal. Why am I... You know what, you hear me? Heather, you have him very flustered right now. He's very nervous. <laughs> well, while he's getting set up, I, 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 I do want to ask you another question here while Ray's getting set up here, okay? So, uh, before you, uh, a lot of uh, African-American adult entertainers were kind of like in the background scenes, like never on the actual like cover or anything like that, and... And I remember Vivid in particular, I said this, you know, in my intro before I brought you on, was mostly known for, like, white women. And, like, there were a few Latina women that were signed to contracts, but they were always, like, fair-skinned and they had, like, the white features. But you were the first one that came out and looked different. 
And that's why you were my personal favorite Vivid Girl, because I never really paid attention to Vivid, because growing up, we were told, like, oh, that's the racist company. You know, they don't hire, you know, people that look like us and that, and that kind of thing. So what was it like for you, and how and how big of a deal was that in your personal life to be the first contracted, you know, African-American woman, woman of color, minority, whatever you want to call it, sign the Vivid? Well, well, working for Vivid was amazing. To be a Vivid Girl was everything. Um, I think when... It came to first signing up with them. I, you know, I really wanted to be represented. I didn't want people to see me as any color. I just wanted to be represented as Heather, you know, as a human being and what the talents I'm bringing to anything. So the first thing I had, you know, these are kind of the things that I requested. These are the things that I wanted. I saw a vision of what I wanted to do. And if I was going to sign with them, they would have to be on the same vision. And Stephen Hirsch, he was right there with me from the beginning to the end. And I, I have to give it to Stephen Hirsch and my manager, Dave Copeland. They really rocked my career. He really kind of, they catapulted me with with the respect that I wanted to see as, as me go out as a bigger girl or just anybody in the x-ray adult business. Okay, okay. Hey, nerd, I, w- I want to jump in here real quick, if you don't mind. Go for it, buddy. This is all you, man. So I, w- I want to kind of go back and forth because, you know, again, we don't have too much time. But I want to go back to the Robin Bird show, if you don't mind, because it, it had such a – and again, guys, I couldn't get on my laptop, so it is what it is. I'll do it from my phone. But, um, you know, it, that that show was special. That show was special. There were two there were two flagship shows on public access here in New York Uh I don't know. I don't know if you remember. You probably will. But there was Midnight Blue with Al Goldstein, who I met, and he was freaking crazy. Um, I, and then there was also the Robin Bird show. So during that show, Heather, now I know you're a singer, okay? Yes. Believe it or not, I'm a little bit of a singer too. But neither you know that. Um, there was a song that Robin Bird would sing, and I, I've been dying. I, I, you know, I got, nerd. We got to get Robin on, by the way. But anyway, okay. There was, there's a song that she sang at the end of the show called, do you remember? Yeah, Baby, when you bang your box. <laughs> baby, I, bang your box. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think well, <laughs> my favorite, one of my favorite parts of the show, towards the end. Now, my question to you is this, and this is kind of a silly question, but, you know, it's a question I've always had since I was younger. And during that time, you know, you, you're all very beautiful people very attractive uh, it seemed like you guys all got along amazing was there ever a time during that uh segment of the show that things might have gotten how can i put this a, a little you know heated or in, in a positive way hotter uh you know something that didn't that wasn't allowed to be on public access that maybe you guys had a little more fun afterwards on and so forth did that ever happen after, after one of those segments you know what it, it... It's supposed to be funny because in that show, behind the scenes, it was like the most, the smallest room. You really didn't have any room up in there. You know, um, a lot of us had to hang out in the hallway and get dressed in the hallway. So it was really kind of like, while everyone's doing the show, everyone's running back to go back to the club that they're featuring at so they can get to their next performance. So... Sometimes, you know, the vibe after the banging your box, you know, I leave because I, I used to dip out and just go straight to the club. I used to go to Tunnel and, <laughs> and those clubs at that time. So <laughs> I, would, I wouldn't stay if there was any freaky stuff going on. But I remember, you know, it would be chaos before the show because we were live. So everything had to go perfect. And we only had like 30 minutes, I do believe. So it was... It was more like, you know, you know, just like, a, you know, when you, you're in and out, you know, when you're popping a shot, you're just in and out, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. you got a dip. <laughs> I got you. I got you. And, 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 you know, listen, again, you're from the hood, you know, yeah, like I said, I, I'm from Lower East Side. Now, when, when I was a kid, you know, again, I'm not going to give my age out, but I'm in my mid forties, by the way. So, you know, Avenue A, Avenue B, Avenue C, Avenue D down south of Houston, uh, you know, th- those areas weren't what, what they are now. Do you still, are you still in love with New York? Like, like I mean, I, I'm sure you did a lot of work probably on the West Coast. 
like, you know, how was it for you, man? Like, growing up here in New York, you know, from the hood and, and, and becoming just, like, an absolute icon. And, and I got to tell you something. Seriously. Like, <laughs> do you ever get stopped in the street? Like, do people just straight up recognize you? Yeah, definitely. Especially in my in my in my um, hood, you know, New York. This is you know, I'm a native New Yorker. But I I traveled so many places. I've lived so many places throughout my you know my career, you know, and just life in general. And you know, we're traveling from Africa to Serbia to Iceland, um, everywhere in the United States. I think I've been. Um, and to me, I always come back home. I, there's nothing like New York. You know, I love I love the concrete. It just makes me, you know, keeps my, my backbone strong. Okay, okay. Hey, uh, now let me ask you a question, Heather. Now you have a very tight connection to music. Uh, you were a, a soul train dancer, you were um, in a couple of music videos, the most infamous one being uh, How Do You Want It with Nina Hartley. That was an amazing video as well, and Tupac Shakur. Uh, I just yeah. want to ask you, who were some of your favorite, favorite hip-hop artists growing up? Oh, my favorite, uh, definitely MC Light. Um, MC Light. Wow. There you go. Okay. He's bringing it back right there. <laughs> I love Public Enemy, Naughty by Nature. I mean, there's so many people, you know, uh, White Club John. Um, and this is like people, all the people I know, you know, for me to really put a nail on everybody I love, you know, you're dealing with hip hop, I, I really respect some good hip hop, you know, and when it comes to uh, Heather, Heather, yeah. you, you're giving the you're giving the PC answer, all right? No, what I want many because I'll sit here and give you a hundred people on the list. You okay. know, and you know if you if you of course, you know, Biggie, of course Lil Kim, you know, Tupac, but it can go endless. Like truly it can because there are so many incredible artists. At least I, when I grew up from Latin quarters and working in Latin quarters and being in the mecca of it all, you know, I've watched a lot of my friends, these colleagues that are huge hip hop legends now, and I respect them all. I really do. I have so much respect for them all. Okay, but listen, we, we all have kids, like I have kids, okay, and one of them is definitely my favorite, all right? I'm not going to tell them that. <laughs> I, I, don't have, I don't have a kid. <laughs> Damn it. Do you have friends? <laughs> yeah, friends. All right, so so one of them is definitely your favorite, okay? But you're not going to say that. But I'm going to ask you, who is your favorite? Number one, if you had one song, one hip-hop artist that you would listen to on a daily basis, who would that be? Mm. That's you have, the, you have the Jeopardy music go, ready to go, nerd? Bam, 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 it's it's chub rock. Treat me right. Oh man, really? Okay. okay. That is amazing. That's actually. Let me tell you something. That's actually on my playlist. That's my. That's that's one of my hardcore tracks. Yeah. Like, have you ever met? So you ever met Trey? When it comes to overall, like my creative profit, profit when it comes to music is is definitely Prince. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. He was phenomenal. He's a bad motherfucker, man. And everyone knows it was better. Back in the day, there was that debate, Michael Jackson or Prince. I think Prince won that one, hands down. I'm sorry. Yeah. He was a bad well, motherfucker. Well, not for me. Hold on. Not, well, I mean, I mean, not for me. There was no debate. Prince was always, in my humble opinion, and this is, again, my humble opinion, uh, possibly. I, I thought he was uh, more talented. And I, that's that's crazy to say. But I thought, I thought Prince had something special. See, Prince... Prince had that that it factor, and Michael Jackson probably did when he was younger. But Prince had that thing where, man, the women loved him and the men wanted to be him. And I don't know if Michael Jackson really had that. Well, he was a great singer, dancer, and one of the greatest guitar players of all time. Man, he's he's freaking phenomenal. There's a lot of videos on YouTube of him just playing some originals from like way back in the day. And he he plays it better than the originals. Man, he's awesome. Right. It's really hard to compare them. You know, they both were they both were exquisite. And still is, you know, in spirit. Uh, are you still making music, or what are you doing right now? Right now, actually, you know, I'm in production right now, that, um, shooting my life docu series. So that's what I'm working on right now. And then, you know, I have my photography business. I I own a photography studio in New York, 
and art gallery as well. So, um, and then I went to New York Institute of Photography School. So that was about nine years ago. So I'm a professional photographer, retoucher, you know, and all the little projects that I'm working on myself, you know, coffee table books and photography books. And um, I'm working on a few more erotic fiction novels because I wrote one before called Insatiable. Uh, it's with St. Martin's Press. So, you know, I, I have so many layers to me. <laughs> yeah, there is. And, and, you know, right now, I think my most, the most thing that I'm passionate about and I'm focusing on is really photography. I, I'm really loving that, that side of the business right now, at least that side of, of my craft. I was checking out your website, as a matter of fact, uh, heatherhunterphotography.com. There it was, the plug. Um, now, do you prefer being in front of the camera or behind the camera? Um, now, um, I could say I love being behind the camera. You know, I don't mind being in front of the camera. You know, to me, it's, you know, but I really love my, I, I live such a low-key life. I really, I love my peace and and, you know, I, I really do. I love my solitude. So I'm able to, you know, create in, in happiness, as you would say. Okay. okay. Yeah. I'm going to jump in there. I'm going to jump in here really quickly. You know, Heather, I've, I've interviewed. Now, I've been doing this whole interview thing for about 10 years, uh, mostly in the wrestling business. Um, there was a, a gentleman by the name of Bill Apter that he was a publisher of uh, Pro Wrestling Illustrated. And I've been working for him for a long time. And again, I've interviewed really big names. But I got to tell you something, Heather. Out of all the names I've interviewed, nerd, out of everybody I've interviewed, why the hell is this the one time that I'm actually nervous? <laughs> <laughs> well, because like she helped you become a man, actually. you know, This woman right here helped you become a man. And it's all coming full circle. I, I just, I'm just a little like taking the bet. Now, listen, Heather, I have a beautiful fiance. I mean, she is absolutely gorgeous. The love of my life. I love her. Oh, but I told her. My love. What's that? Send her my love, please. Oh, I will. Her name is Jennifer. Congratulations, Congratulations to both y'all. Well, thank you, my love. But listen, I told her, I said, Jen, do you remember that girl I told you about a long time ago that I used to watch when I was a kid? She goes, yeah, I think so. And I was like, I'm talking to her today. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Hey Heather, um, hey Heather. I know we only got a little bit more time with you, so I just want to bang out a couple questions. You can answer them as quick as you like. Um, just because, like, these were some that I got sent in to me from our fan base here at the Voices of Misery podcast. Uh, who is your favorite man and your favorite woman to work with in the adult industry? Uh, favorite woman, I could say Colby Ty. Oh yeah, I and love that. Scene. I love working with uh, Peter North. And Randy Spears and Shawn Michaels, yeah, and um, the Heartbreak Kid, and <laughs> Mr. Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> that was always a joke no, growing wrong, up. That, wrong Shawn Michaels, nerd. Yeah. Wrong Shawn Michaels, buddy. Yeah, yeah. that and was I always like a joke. With Janine too. Janine was great to work Janine, with. Janine, yeah. another one, another legend. Uh, yeah. Um, do you ever? Uh, 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 I'm sorry. Like this was another question here. This is from uh, from James McIntyre. He says, "Do you ever miss the adult film life?" Um, no, I don't actually. Uh, I, I can say, I, you know, I'm missing a lot of my friends, but you know, it's great to be now vicariously living through them and seeing, you know, how their lives go and, and everything. But no, you know, I, you know, I'm, it's been so long. I've, I haven't been in business for at least about 27 to 28 years. You can always come back. Time. You can always come back. <laughs> you still got the looks. I've seen you online recently. You still got the looks. You can do it. Thank you. Thank you. I'm actually about to hit 5-0. I, I was just about to ask you. about to hit the big milestone birthday. You got any plans? Uh, actually, I'm going to have a big private party with my friends and dinner. It's going to be really nice. But wait a second. When, when did you? How old were you when you started in the industry? Because I started in the industry at age 18. Um, on your birthday, right? I retired at about 21, and then I came back at 20, 24 just to do a couple of films, and I completely, really was officially gone. Unbelievable. Yeah. So I, I was that 14-year-old pervert standing in front of the cable box. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was interesting because I was, while I was in the business, people didn't really, you know, I was giving advice to people, 
age 50 or 60 when it came to sexual vice, and I was only 18 years old. So that's kind of deep, you know? Because while I was learning like anybody else at a young age, I was learning sexuality as I went and I went along. Um, I just had more of a deeper insight of wanting to know more, even when it came down to, you know, your the education, the knowledge, learning how the body ticks, you know, what turns the body on and, and, you know, even when it comes to health. So there's so many things that I was fascinated with. It wasn't just only sex, you know what I mean? So I think that's why I was able to be able to help and guide people along the way, you know, who was actually fans of my work. Of course. Yeah, I've I've got two more fan questions, and and like I told you before, we made con or before the show when we made contact the first time, I got a lot of weird questions like, "What's your favorite sexual position? You prefer men or women? That kind of shit." But I like doggy style, and I like I like both, but I prefer men mostly. <laughs> there, there you go, Ray. There's still a chance, my friend, Ray. But but I, but, but I but I I I did weed it down to two good questions here. Um, uh, the 2003 AVN Hall of Fame. What did that mean to you? It was it was really sweet, you know. I have my award back there, you know. It's a beautiful award, you know. You know, to me, I I I I, I felt blessed that, and I it was kind of it's kind of funny too because I I felt blessed and honored, but then it was this weird side of me like, wow, I'm, someone's giving me an award on how I had how I know how to fuck, you know. <laughs> hey. So I I felt that to be kind of crazy but you know we live in a crazy world and it's you know it's all about what we celebrate and what we you know want to pay respect and tribute to and so i appreciate the the hall of fame i really do hey heather that heather that, that's amazing you get awards i keep getting laughed at what the hell's going on here <laughs> i was about to say the same thing <laughs> Anyway, go ahead. Ask your last question. We have to get this beautiful, perfect woman out of here. Of course, of course. Uh, so, Heather, this question comes from Joshua Brigman. He says, uh, do you still watch porn? And if you do, who are some of your favorite stars to watch now? Um, if I watch porn, um, I'm really, you know, I, I'm so hard because I like watching, like, little clips. I, I really don't watch. I watch those, like, two, three-minute clips where people's faces cut off. You know? Oh, that's, that's, absolutely, it's all I need. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Continue, please. It's certainly fun. But, you know, I can say, you know, in the game right now, who I truly respect in the game right now, is uh, Misty Stone, uh, I September. Um, I can truly say, uh, well, uh, well, she's not in the business anymore, but Jada Fire. Oh, yeah. A Sky Black. Um, Sarah J. I mean, there's, 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 some girls out there that I really truly go, hey, you know, y'all doing your thing. <laughs> it's funny, bitch. I actually just had Sarah J on the show not too long ago. Huh? I actually just had Sarah J on the show too long ago, or not too long. Ago. She was a very sweet woman, very nice lady, very cool. Oh yeah, you know what else? I love Skin Diamond. I oh. find her incredibly beautiful. I love her creativity. Oh. And you know who else she loves? She, she loves me, Big Ray, for some reason. Did you say that? <laughs> Is that me? Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Hey, nerd. Listen, I know we gotta let. I know we gotta let Heather Hunter go. I'm f- I know it I, sucks, man. I would be remiss if I didn't have the opportunity to look at this camera and Sarah and, and Sarah J. Heather Hunter. We're talking about Sarah J. Heather. Yes. I don't know if you, I don't know if you can see me, but I'm coming. I'm, I'm looking at you with sincere eyes right now. You are a. Uh, uh, number one, you're above and beyond uh, uh, sweeter than I thought you would be, number one. Because whenever you meet your hero, <laughs> whenever you meet somebody that you've been looking forward to meeting for a long time, they, they never live up. But you're just really cool and chill. And I can see myself hanging out with you, just have grabbing a beer. I don't know if you're a beer girl, but um, just, you know, you seem so chill. You are absolutely beautiful. You have molded, uh, again, my taste in women uh, when it comes to aesthetic but um, it's nice to know that, that you know, you're just, you know, you're so multi-talented, multi-faceted. And I genuinely, uh, humbly pray blessings on your future. Um, 50, I can't believe it because you look younger than, than me. And, uh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and 
I'm, I'm, I'm not even blowing smoke up your, you know what, and, and I actually follow you on Twitter, I follow you on Instagram, and I've been a big fan and supporter of everything you've done uh, on a positive level, and, uh, you know, thank you for, for coming on here, and listen, not for nothing, man, I was like, what, 12, 13 when I was watching as a kid, now I'm in my 40s, and, I, and we're sitting here talking, it's kind of a cool thing, so thank you so much. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, before we let you go, Heather, is there anything you want to plug and promote? You know, like you, you you said you had your life story coming up and everything like that. Is there anything else you want to plug and put out there besides HeatherHunterPhotography.com? Well, you know, I really, you know, if you want to, you know, check me out, just you can check me out on Twitter and Instagram, which is at Hunter Heather. And really, you know, I'm just sitting here just, if you want to book a photographer, I'm really good at what I do. You know, I, I'm all about bringing the beauty from inside and out, you know, and we're going to make it happen no matter what you want to shoot because I I, I, pract- I I actually do all types of forms of uh, photography. So I think that's really the most important stuff. And thank you for having me on the show, you know, cool. and pretty much stay tuned for the docuseries that I'm doing. You know, we're going to be in production for another year, but I'll definitely keep you in tune on what's up and when it's going to pop off. Heather. Okay. Hey, Heather. When when that when that time comes up, uh, I'm gonna reach out to you. Or maybe maybe the nerd will reach out to you. We have a, a pretty good a fan base, and I say good because it's not just this fan base, but also Hami Media as well. And we we definitely would love to help you promote. Not asking for anything, just a thank you. Anything we can do, uh, social media wise, uh, please shoot us a message or, or or link us on your on your tweets, and that would be that would be a thank you for, for you know what you did today. Of course. Oh of course. no. Really sweet. Thank you. And really thank you. Yeah, and Heather, you, you, you have my number. Uh, anytime you, you need something, I would like to have you come on for like a long form podcast and you have more time just so we could just kind of bullshit, you know, to shoot the breeze about oh, life. Thanks. You know? Yeah, next time we'll do visuals. So, you know, we could say hello to everybody. Oh, yes. <laughs> and at the same time, um, you know, I just wish everyone greatness and do you. That's all. <laughs> we feel the same, Happy Heather. Sunday. You have a good night, Bye. okay? We'll talk to you soon. Okay. Have a good night. You too. You too. Okay. So um, I, I guess when Heather, if you want, she can uh, hang up a phone call on her. And dude, how cool was that dude. to have? <laughs> hey. Now let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. I'm stressed out right now because I don't know how my microphone sounds here. I'm on a freaking cell cell phone. You were kind of in and out a little bit. Uh, it, it did get better after a while, especially after you came back, you got the computer, and then you went back to the cell phone. It did sound better, so it wasn't terrible. Fuck my life. You know what I'm going to do? While we're doing this, I'm just going to turn this fucking computer on. I am so absolutely pissed off that this goddamn thing d- didn't work, man. I've been, I've been looking for How long have I been asking you to get this girl on? It's, it's, it's been a couple, of, a couple of weeks, I think, right? At least. At least a couple of weeks. And then what happened was, and I, I'm an idiot. This is my fault because Windows decided, oh, we need to update your computer. I said, yeah, let's do that, right? So I update my goddamn computer, and the shit. Whoa, whose heart is that? You that's sending me a heart? That was me. Heather Hunter said bye, so I sent her a heart back. It was like a thank you, dude. I gotta tell you something, bro. What's up, man? Forget my forget my computer. My heart, and I'm gonna sound like a big pussy, and I don't care. Dude, this, <laughs> this is like my childhood crush, man. I know, man. That's why like, I wanted to make this happen for you. You know, like you told me you were a big fan of Heather Hunter, so I reached out to her and I wanted this to happen for you, man, because you guys took us in, you know, as like an extended bastard cousin, retarded from like five different generations back into the Hami Media family. And uh, this is just my way of showing my appreciation for the way that you guys have helped us out. So, anything I, I, I can do, man. I appreciate it, man. But but, dude, it's like it's like fucking meeting. <laughs> She's my Derek Jeter of, of porn. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy, man. Like I'm I'm sitting here, and and I'm hearing her voice. And if dude, if you ever do visual, you better watch out. I, I'm I'm gonna be in trouble. Could could you guys see me? Oh yeah, I, I can see you just fine, man. I can see yeah, I can see you picking your nose. No, you're scratching your nose. Look like there for a second. So yeah, I, I, I can see it. I'm picking my nose, ass munch. I'm fucking scratching. <laughs> I'm biting my my whatever the gimmick on my what do you call a nail? <laughs> We're still rolling, man. I have not stopped this because I only have both of you for a limited time tonight. Because you have a hot date with the wife. 
I do, man. What a fucking week we had. Please elaborate. Go go into it, man, because you were there for me when I was when I had a couple of days of my anxiety building up with crazy shit at work and sure enough it, it was nothing and it blew over today. So go ahead, man. How was your week? You 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 know, you were you were a pretty good friend, I gotta be honest with you, man. You know, you were checking in on me, fucking answering my questions, you know, and listen, I'm gonna ask the audience out there and I'll ask you at the same time. Do you mind? Yeah, sure, go ahead. <sighs> so Jennifer is very unhappy here in New York, man. Just really unhappy. See, I have a problem. The problem is that I have a son. And he's only 11 years old. And he just turned 11. And Jen is dead set on leaving New York City. The thing is that I don't like New York. I fucking hate New York City. And the people are going to be like, how can you hate New York? Well, very easy. New York sucks. It's expensive. Places here are not, you know, it's everything is sucks. Anyway, um... I want to move. I want to move. I would love to move to California. But really? when you have an 11 year old son, hold on. When you have an 11 year old son, okay, whose mother you're not married to anymore, and she has, you know, uh, she has not sole custody. I have him part, like part custody, but she's the main parent. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Like so, joint custody split or something like that. Yeah, some shit. Yeah. You know, a fucking woman makes 90, 90 something thousand dollars, and I'm paying child support, but neither here nor there. Um, yeah, I'm not even joking. Like, that's, like, what it is. And anyway, uh, so it's difficult for me, dude, to just pick up and leave. Anyway, me and her, we, uh, went out and hung out with my buddy Ozzy, who I gave a shout-out to, uh, on, on, uh, the Impact Attack this week. And he, he's a big wig for, uh, 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 let's just say a company that runs buildings, and I have options. She felt that um, during the conversations when we were really drunk, uh, that I made it clear that I didn't want to leave New York. And then she fucking shuts down on me, nerd. I don't hear from her. She doesn't want to talk to me. I think she was hurt. Mm. Oh, and geez. basically, she's like, you know, I don't know if I want to continue this relationship. I've been with this woman five and a half years, dude. How do you think I felt? Of, of, of course, man. You're, it's probably like a punch in the gut. Oh, I think someone wants to say hi to you. Hold on a Shut second. Up. Why are you calling me from the other room? So you can bring me a, a, a mixed drink so I can make another alcoholic beverage. Is that the nerd ad? No. It's someone else. <laughs> is that, it's my is mistress. Heather Hunter? <laughs> <laughs> it's Heather Hunter. Oh, there she goes. Hey, hey, hey nerd, did you tell did you tell uh, did you tell nerd ed that Heather Hunter did a strip tease for us and naked and live here? <laughs> no, I kinda let that part slip. Thanks. Now I'm sitting on the couch tonight, the doghouse. Oh, it's not true. It's not true. All he does is talk about your boobs, nerd ad, which is what he should do. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, right. <laughs> I never, I would never believe that. Nerd ad, nerd ad, don't go anywhere. I have a question for you. I need your help. Yep. You, you got a minute? Yeah. So I was telling nerd. Nerd, did you tell her about what happened between me and Jen? Oh, yeah. She actually read all the messages. She has access to all the Facebook stuff. I didn't read Very all cool. of the messages. Most of them. Good. No, no, it's cool. I, I, could, I could give two shits, but now I know that you saw him. But listen, here's the deal. So, basically, I feel, and I don't want to talk too loud because Jen's on the in the other room, but part of me feels like she was making me choose, like whether I have to stay here in New York or go. But when shit hit the fan, um, you know, she loves me. And she's like, well, I'm not going to go anywhere, but if you can, you know, kind of figure things out, you know, in, in a year or two years... I'm like, that's feasible, but do you think she was just testing me and shit? I mean, she's got the Are you ring. Recording? I mean, yeah, yeah, it's recording right now. Okay, well then. We're always okay. recording. I don't want to answer then. <laughs> Go ahead and answer. Go ahead and answer, goddammit. I need you to. Yeah. I, well, we, look, uh, we need that female perspective, goddammit. I told the nerd here that she was making you choose, and I didn't think that was right. Because you, you said you have a kid, right? In New York? Is that you? Yeah, see? No. That's just, that's not cool. Not, not to me. But that's my opinion. Why you got me talking on here if you're recording? Well, well, my personal feelings were like, if you're with someone who has a child, you're also adopting that child because you're accepting the fact that this person right. has one and you have to kind so of... So you have to think yeah. of the kid too. Exactly. Like, no. So the ultimatum thing just doesn't fly because like, let's say hypothetically, like I came into the relationship with Samantha and you had Jenna. I, I, I can never like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, it's either... Me and Samantha, or and you got to leave Jenna to come with us. I, it's just weird, you know. Like I, I, I couldn't do that, but 
Maybe it was just a big test. I or maybe she was just on the brag. Who knows? Is that what it was? Like that, Well, to, to be honest with you guys, she actually is on the rack. There you go. Hormones, man. Hell of a thing. I don't oh, wanna hear from you. I wanna hear from Nardette. Oh, <laughs> go, go oh my god. <laughs> what do you think, Nardette? Do you think do you think it was a test of like my loyalty and love to her and shit? Oh, I don't know if it was a test. I just don't like the fact that it was an ultimatum. You would get, like, how are you supposed to choose? That's not fair. I don't think it was fair. Let me ask you a question. Another question. I'm so, out of my beer, you know. I'm standing here with dry. An empty can of Bud Light. <laughs> They're not even sponsoring us, and we're just saying Bud Light out loud. What's the question? All right, so the question is this. So, so all right, so then, so then we're talking about this, and then this, this really big seven foot black guy walks in and she says this is my boyfriend i'm like okay so is that cool what wait that's for real no it's not for real <laughs> oh then what the hell is he talking about i'm so confused i'm just trying to i'm just throwing you a curveball here kid oh so 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 basically like what he's saying is like if she's like well we got to separate because this like giant seven foot tall black man walks in i, I think that's what he's trying to say <laughs> Oh, well, then you, you better run. You better get the fuck out, man. Get the ass whipped, Big fuck, Ray. Fuck, fuck out of here. You ever <laughs> seen me? I'll beat anybody's ass. I don't give a fuck who you are. Papa Don, Greek God, Papa Don, you hear me? You, hey, professional, did you see that professional picture professional I sent you? Champion? You see that picture huh? I sent you? How fucking yoked I am right now, man? You're Yo, sending you pictures should... of yourself? Well, I sent a side picture, you know, of like, of like the yokeness, because he sent oh some of himself You're on the Stevie Ray yoked. Fitness. Can you tell him to stop using that word? I'm hip now. No, the... Yo, I gotta tell you, son, you are mad yoked. <laughs> Thank you. Fucking Get the hell yoked. out of here. We're gonna record in a little bit. Let me have some time with Ray. Listen, Get you're out. Like, you called me in here. You had to bring me a drink. No, no, Nerdette, 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 Nerdette. You still there? She's still coming back. Yep. She needs a beer. What's oh, up? Come back. <laughs> sit down for a second. I want to talk to you. <laughs> well, give me a second. I, I can't sit here dry. I need yeah. something to drink. Yeah. Give she me needs a her second. beer to talk. Oh, okay, well, yeah. She'll okay, do, 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 what do we do now? She's she's gone. No, like now we fool around until she gets back. Hey nerd, hey nerd. What's up? What man? if a seven What if a seven foot black girl came in? Would you Would you Would you take her? Uh, what and a fighter in bed? Both. <laughs> why not? Like, shit, why not, man? So how about, how about have you ever, have you ever four to seven foot black girl in bed? I said, well, I did once, and um, I thought it was a woman. Then the pants came off, and a and a donkey dong fell out. So I'm like, yeah, I can't do this anymore. And I'm not, true story, actually, by the way, I got a lot of them, man. No, you did not. Did that really happen to you, dude? I was I was like 19 years old. I was at some bar, right, and I'm sitting there drinking alcohol in the back. And I'm gonna stop the story because here comes the nerd. At hello, honey. Um, hey. <laughs> She's hey, back. Hey, uh, you two are you know, shady. We need to start doing certain little things on the side once in a while, you know? Uh, doing a couple of oh, joint things. I told you I wanted to do some more shit. Uh, can you believe this fucking laptop booted up now that we're pretty much done? <laughs> so this is what happens to Big Ray, right? So, we, so we're sitting there coordinating this. You know, like we talked on the phone. I'm driving home from work. Get in the house. I'm like, all right, cool. We're going to start setting this thing up. We, we and, and I'm talking to Heather on the side. I'm talking to Big Ray. The time comes to get this thing going, and his computer just shits the bed. So I'm like, all right, cool, I'll start it off, you know? And he's like, I'll jump in. And he has to get on the cell phone. The sound sucks. He gets on his computer. The computer craps out again. goes back to the phone, and now his computer finally works after Heather Hunter is on her way to her dinner party. And the worst part about this shit is that she's not having dinner with me. <laughs> well, hey, you know what? Maybe there'll be a knock on the door. There'll be a five foot three black porn star at your door, and it'll be her. Dude, I'm sorry. Uh, nerd it. Have you seen this young lady? No. <laughs> not interested. <laughs> she does Why? Not, she does not like me interviewing porn stars. But listen, nerdette, listen, let's be real. Your boy ain't got, well, does he have a shot? I don't know. I mean, what he's, the picture that you sent me, brother, you, you are hung like a fucking gorilla. Pretty, oh, pretty yo. for God's <laughs> sakes, man. Yeah, and the funny thing about gorillas is, like, gorillas are, are have, have very small penises, if, if you know anything about the uh, the animals in the jungle. <laughs> They're known as some of the smallest penises in comparison to size. So, thank you. Fine, fine. Hung like a fucking, what, like a donkey, I guess? Donkeys are well hung, aren't they? I'll take know. that one. That one I'll take. <laughs> so, you guys, you guys are recording after... So you like double dipping here? Oh, hell yeah, man. Don't worry. I'm going to cut it up nicely, so it'll sound good. You know, it'll flow well. 
Well, you'll stop this one and then restart another one, right? You're of course. Gonna, yeah. Of course, yeah. We're not going to make like a four-hour podcast, no. Shit, I really do hope, though, man, that, you know, I don't know, man, that my sound, my, you know, that it wasn't that terrible. I, I felt bad that I had to call fucking Heather Hunter on a goddamn cell phone. Hey, man, you know what? The thing is, is like, at least you got to talk to her, and I thought it was pretty cool, man, and I'm just glad this whole thing worked out, because when you mentioned that you were a big fan of hers, and I should get her on the show, because I started building a name as a freaking porn peddler online, as far as, you know, doing uh, interviews and shit like that, and I reached out well, to the, her. The, yeah, go ahead. No, I, I, I thought it was really cool, because I was able to put my cell phone down and do the old uh, double-fisted tug while she was walking. Talking. <laughs> well... I was surprised at how cool she was, and uh, she was just a very fun person to talk to. And she had, and she was in the wrestling, which is right down your guys' alley. That how I mean media. I don't want to, f- you know, you know that that pissed me off. I don't want to fucking talk about wrestling. All I do is talk about wrestling. Nerdette, all I, do, Nerdette's not here. Right? She didn't hear yeah, me saying yeah. old yeah. double fisted. She's right here. She's right here. You should have saw her face. She turned her head and. <laughs> Christ. All right, so the double fisted tug is, is an exercise I do for Stevie Richards Fitness. Stevie Richards sure Fitness, nice plug. And I'm going to throw another commercial of his out there because he's a good guy. He's all right. He's all right. Very fucking handsome, by the way. I do him. <laughs> oh, my God. What do you, oh, my God? What's wrong with that? Nothing wrong with that. You, you guys are something else. This is fun. This is fun. Man. We're just sitting here shooting the shit, and this is what the Voices of Misery podcast. We have no fucking point. We, we have a porn have a store. Is he drinking? No, he's going to be drinking. He's got a hot day tonight. Oh, that's oh, right. No, he's going to I, no, no. Time out. Oh, he's got the I, baby cup again. <laughs> the baby cup. Hold <laughs> oh, no. on. Baby cup, gosh damn you. Let me see something. Hold on. I want to see how big this shit is. This is 20 <laughs> ounces, kid. Ooh. Oh. I've had three of these shits. You know what? Can you mind, while we're on live, if I can test out my Skype? Oh, go ahead, man. You got another, what, like 10 minutes? All right. So I'm go- So you keep talking with your wife real quick, okay? okay. Keep talking with the nerd Ed. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump off this shit, and uh, we'll see how, how this works, okay? Let's do it, man. All right, I'll be right back. So this is a funny podcast. The thing was, like, we started off, we had a we had an adult film star on. Why am I in here? And then we started shooting the shit, and then you came on the show, <laughs> and now it's like we have no idea what the hell's going on anymore. This one really went off the rails, and that's the way it goes in the show sometimes, you know? Um we're going to be doing a show tonight, actually. So we're going to record something right after this. Not in connection with this, but something that's going to be posted at a later time. Because this one obviously has to be edited. It's all over the fucking place. Or you think I should just post it as is? I don't know. I, I, I have no idea what you talked about or how it went. or It nothing. went really good. It went really good. Uh, Ray is a big fan boy. Hopefully the sound came out. There's no static, right? You said he, you're the one recording it? Uh, I think we both are. Uh, he said there's something that goes on with Skype where even if you're not on a call, you can get the recording if you're mentioned in the group or something like that. So I don't know how that works because I'm no technical. We're, we're, we're fucking idiots, basically. Oh, uh, here's you Ray. Get, turn your phone off. There he is. We got him back. Big Ray Hernandez. Oh, there he is. Oh my God. I think we're I think we're calling Heather too. Holy shit. Oh, you better stop that. No, no, she won't pick up. I, I sure hope not. I don't want her to think we're harassing her. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking deal, man. Yeah, what's up, Here's man? The so now, ever since I did this goddamn Windows gimmick here, it, it, it's it's uh it's not my my Skype is not booting up. Are you kidding me? No, I'm call- talking to you from my fucking cell phone again. God damn my life. You may have to get a new computer, my friend. Dude, I can't afford a computer. That's why I, I've been trying to, to, to freaking... <sighs> why does it keep saying it's calling Heather Hunter? Yeah, it says two of three to call. Hopefully she doesn't pick up. Just, just, just write her a message saying, hey, sorry, you know, Big Ray is a fucking pervert and wants to touch your butthole or something like that. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, goodness gracious. I'm going to send her a message right now. You guys go ahead and talk about whatever you're going to talk about. I'm going to let her know. You okay, know so hold on. So, Nerdette, hold yeah. on. I'm going to put this down here. Have you guys had a chance to listen or watch the new Dave Chappelle special on Netflix? I don't like him. So what? <laughs> I don't really, I don't care for him too much. I, you, you broke up. It sounded like you said something about not liking black people. What? Oh, whoa, whoa! <laughs> no, no, no! I don't, I don't, I don't think he's funny at all. The Hold nerd likes second. him a lot. Oh, I freaking love him. I think he's hysterical. Dude, all right. So all, I don't know. I don't know what your wife just said. 
Well, oh, he's, he's freezing. Oh, he's freeze. He is freezing. So yeah, she said that she doesn't like him very much, but she did acknowledge the fact that I love him. I, I was great. I lost you here. This is the worst fucking call of all time. <laughs> this <laughs> poor guy, man. <laughs> I, you you want to know something? And when we first hooked up with Tommy Media, we were the amateurs. And now it kind of flipped a little bit. And now look at Big Ray here. I, I can't even type. <laughs> you that? Is he my <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> it looks like Uncle Fester finally got his first computer. Isn't that what this looks like a little bit? Hey there, cue ball. It's called alt, uh, Shift Alt Delete or whatever it is. Isn't that what it is? Control Alt Delete. You look so angry. It's not work. <laughs> oh, he's like breaking out all oh, over the place. I think we're going to have to cut like most of I, this. I haven't shaved. But listen, so what the fuck was that? So Dave Chappelle, dude, if you're a fan of Dave Chappelle, I will say that this is possibly, unequivocally, unquestionably, the funniest shit that he's done in fucking years. I've I, I've heard a lot of different opinions and and most of them positive and it's funny because like you get like a lot of left wingers right wingers conservatives and everyone and their and, and and their mother is saying it it was great you know so I've only heard a couple of bad opinions about it but pretty much everyone's saying it's great because he goes after everybody no one's safe he likes to offend people just to see how far he can push them. He made fun of the L's, the G's, the B's, the T's, and especially the Q's. Well, no more the T's than the Q's. <laughs> yeah, he just anyway. basically went at people. I'm definitely going to check that one out. I'll probably be watching it this weekend because I'm off work on Saturday, so I'll be checking that out for sure. And Nerdette, are you going to? Um, are you guys? I don't know if I can ask. Are you guys going to be having intercourse tonight or no? No. I'm going to try. I'm <laughs> definitely going to try. And um, I don't know if I've. Like, I don't know, I have to wet the whistle first before I can slide the cheeks oh or, whatever, or whatever you God, want to call it. what the fuck is happening? But I am going to wait, try. <laughs> wait, wait, well, first and foremost, uh, Nerdette, I, I am I am uh, befuddled by the fact that you would just answer ever so quickly without even consulting with your, with your loved one over here. <laughs> I don't need to consult with him. He needs to get in this. I said no. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> that one. My body, my choice. Go piss yourself. <laughs> so, what about you, man? Are you, are you going to get laid tonight? Because you guys, you know, you just reconciled. You're you're whining and dining your old lady, and then you're going to be out drinking until four in the morning because New York is a city that never sleeps. Are you guys going to be getting any sleep tonight? It's a big question. First and foremost, I'm, I'm almost forty five years old. <laughs> so the fact that my the fact that my penis can still fill with blood enough to, 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 to slide into her vagina is, is quite a shock to me. Well, what about Blue but, Chew? Uh, Blue Chew? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised you guys don't have a sponsor yet with them. Um, I can't say anything about that. <laughs> uh, it's but, uh, it's good. but if I could, I would. So, Blue Chew. Mm. Anyway. Um, yeah, hell yeah, dude. I'm fucking doing her butt. Wait. You get that access? Well, you guys have been together for five years. Like, we've been together for 14, so it's like, yeah, that door shut a long time ago, my friend. No, that door's supposed to be wide open. <laughs> my game is like, not that strong. No, you, I'm sure you... All right, know that. Know yeah. that. Yeah. Hi, how are you? I'm great. I, I'm so happy I came into this room. <laughs> I'm so fucking happy right now. Regrets every second of it. I, I'm I am I am just in fear that after this conversation, y you you will not like me anymore. Listen, I keep my opinions to myself. And let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I'm not this. I I don't know. You called me in here, and all we're talking about is this stuff. Mm. And I'm like because I out. like I think I think you are a cool, uh, down to earth individual. Um, you know, I, I wanted to, to kind of establish more of a rapport with you because me and your husband talk all the time. Yeah, we do. Yeah, I know. I'm quiet, so I though. I don't, I, don't talk, I don't talk to people. That's just how I am, though. I just, I don't, mm -hmm. I, talk to, I talk to the nerd. That, that's about it. Yeah, and, that's, and I don't recommend that to anybody, just talking to me and no one else. It's yeah, weird. I don't know. I don't know why I'm like that. I, I don't really, like social media and stuff, I don't really do that yeah. that much at all. That's all you. You know what's going to happen, right? You know what's going to happen, guys? I'm getting ready to get out of here. You know what's going to happen? What's up? I want to meet you guys. Oh, boy. Yeah. You're going to have to when come I down here. Guy, 
Oh, I will. I probably will. Cause I, you, how far are you guys from Savannah? Oh boy, Savannah is about an eight-hour drive. No, it's got to be less. It's got to be less than that because Orlando, I thought, was eight or nine hours. Hold on a second. Let's let's consult my. Oh, be uh, careful with the phone, Mr. Siri. Okay, okay. How, how far are you guys from Kissimmee or Orlando? Hold on a second. I'm almost positive. It's like eight or nine hours. It's about 159 miles away. Oh shit! Flies. That's like four hours I told away. That's you. not. Wow, I thought it was. Orlando's a lot like eight or nine hours. I don't know my geography. Okay, I don't know where the fuck yeah, I am so right we're now. we're supposedly like four hours away from Savannah. Yeah, that's not too bad. Here's a deal. I'm always. Uh, I go to Savannah once a year for like two weeks. And I'm due to go to Savannah in another, another couple of months. So this is what's going to happen, guys. Everything that you guys talk about in the podcast, I'm going to do. What am I talking about? When I see you guys, I'm going to hug you. Oh boy! I'm going to ask you how. I'm going to ask you how your days were, and I'm going to somehow find myself on your couch sleeping every single night. I'll walk around in my underwear. Oh lord! <laughs> we have young kids. I will, I, they. They will think I'm Barney. <laughs> I will knock on your door, interrupt your sex, ladies and gentlemen. I will be the friend that you hate, the man that you never want to meet again. No, I'm just kidding, we're gonna, guys. We're going to be uh, in the hallway yeah, I, hiding. I, I probably, what? It said we'll be in the hallway hiding. I don't think he's gone that far back in our podcast. You have to oh, hear that episode. A, he hasn't heard that, that episode. That was a different episode then. Okay. <laughs> I've, I've restarted my, my laptop seven times yet. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, listen, I want you to hear me real quick. Out there, because I'm I'm leaving now. If um, if anybody has a ton of money, and wants to donate a fucking laptop to me, <laughs> hit me up on Twitter. I don't think any rich people listen to this year. Otherwise, this house would be paid off by now. <laughs> You'd be surprised. Dude. You'd be surprised of who listens. Um, you'd be very surprised who listens. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, I used to work at. Remember, I told you 740 Park Avenue. Yes. Remember last time it was up. Oh yeah, uh, the very uh, David Coke, a uh, billionaire, actually the richest man in that building. He passed away this past week, oh, nice. and um, it was a big story here in New York. And uh, <clears throat> him and his brother uh, worth uh, worth like I think three hundred billion combined or something like that. Whatever. And uh, I worked personally for David, and I just want you know I know David can't hear me right now, but I hope that. The devil that is fucking your asshole is getting at least 12 inches in there because you were the biggest the shit I ever met, and I'm glad you're dead. Ladies and gentlemen, good night. <laughs> hey, uh, get off the air. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Hey, that was awesome, man. All right, guys. Goodbye. Bye. Love you all. Later, brother. Thanks for coming on, man. Yes. I love you. <laughs> we're amateurs, man. We're amateurs. I already hit the stop button. Him. Ray, do you have anything you want to plug or promote, friend? <laughs> well, well, yes. I, 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 would, I would love to plug uh, Heather Hunter, but that's not going to happen. Um, listen, guys and gals, uh, please uh, follow me on Twitter at Big Ray Show on Instagram at Big Ray Show. That's B-I-G-R-A-Y-S, another S, H-O-W. Or find me on Facebook at Raymond Big Ray Hernandez. If you're not a weirdo, if you don't send me dick pics, I will definitely uh, uh, accept your friend. Again, if you are rich, uh, please uh, donate your computer. Uh, send messages to one of those gimmicks there. And if a uh, dick pic pops up, I, I, I might still look. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh my God. Big Ray, it's always a pleasure, man. And uh, yeah, dude, Heather Hunter, man. I can't believe we did it. It's about time. Like I said off the air. Like I said off the air. Nerd? Yes. I love you more than Nerdette right now. That you know, can change. I love you more change. than Nerdette, too. Wow. <laughs> Especially now that I'm yoked. Holy shit, dude. <laughs> All, right. All right, brother. You have a good night, man. We'll get some pusa. Enjoy it. Yeah, the guys. That was fun. Oh, my God. You know what? I'm not even going to cut this one up. I'm just going to let it ride out because people know that we do things weird and it's just off the rails, man. (laughs) Shit just happens. How the hell did you get involved in this whole thing? Because you texted me for freaking soda, so I came in here and I got sucked into questions for no reason. I didn't plan on being on this podcast at all. And you're on the same podcast as a porn interview, so there you go. I told you I'd get you on one of these. No, you didn't. 
Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I want to say a special thank you to Heather Hunter. You can check her out at heatherhunterphotography.com. Big Ray Hernandez just gave all his plugs out, so I don't need to repeat them because you guys can just hit the rewind button about 30 seconds and hear them all again. Uh, but you can check us out at Voices of Misery on Twitter. Uh, Gmail is Voices of Misery Podcast at gmail.com. Facebook is Voices of Misery. Is it Voice of Misery Podcast or Voices of Misery? I always Voices fuck that one. Misery. Voices of Misery on Facebook. There's a Facebook page and a group page. So join the group, please, man. We talk shit in there regularly. Uh, you know, um, but we'll just reply to anything, basically, because we just want some feedback. And we've been getting a lot of it lately. So we appreciate you. Almost 3,000 downloads today. So keep the party going. Uh, Reddit is r slash Voices of Misery Podcast. And yeah, just type in Voices of Misery on Gmail or Google, whatever, Chrome, uh, fucking uh, Pandora, whatever the fuck you look up things. Just check us out. We're everywhere, man. Google it. We're everywhere. We're like the bubonic plague motherfuckers. And yeah, we'll check you out. We're going to be doing another podcast maybe tonight. So have a good night, guys. We'll talk to you soon. Later. Yes, it is I, Bin Hameen, commanding all of you to join the wrestling revolution, the underground of media, and follow our brothers at Voices of Misery on Twitter and subscribe to their podcast because they support HackerHameen.Podbean.com and you will go support VoicesOfMisery.Podbean.com because there is no more misery when you leave those FM Mark channels and you join the media underground of Voices of Misery and HackerHameen.Podbean.com. Rise and praise, y'all. <laughs>